Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. I have got to talk to you about your self-sabotage. I just did a TikTok on this and really wanted to expand a little bit more on it over here. So there's multiple ways that we self-sabotage ourselves. Like it just, there's multiple ways, but I wanted to talk to you about three ways that I want you to really focus on when it comes to your goals. There's different self-sabotage in different ways, but this is when you're trying to achieve certain goals, whatever this goal may be right? Whether it be, I don't know, weight loss or consistency or, but it has to be a goal, right? And that's what we're going to talk about today. It's your self-sabotage. So let's jump right into it. So number one is kind of waiting for it to be not easy, but kind of easy, right? The bit, one of the, and this is across the board, not just for goal setting, anything whatsoever. If you are constantly waiting for it to be easy or feel as though you know what, I'm probably not gonna mess this up too bad, then that's gonna be a problem. Because it's something that I really tout about on all of my socials in, in, in my practice, is you gotta embrace the failure. You have to be good with failing. Failing is beautiful. I have said this to you guys multiple time, times, because perfectionism is not a thing. Perfectionism is rooted in insecurity. Your goal is to be imperfectly perfect, like so be an imperfectionist, right? Be an imperfectionist and allow yourself that the journey, right, is the success, not so much the goal. The goal is more of a benchmarker of like, okay, cool, all those micro goals mattered. So you have to understand that the more you're trying to be ready and you're not so worried about the outcome. See, a lot of times you're trying to worry, do you feel ready? Because then you know what the outcome is, which goes into control and ego. So one way that you're self-sabotaging yourself is waiting to feel ready. You can't do that. You just got to take the leap, put the backpack on, take the leap. If it does not work, you have learned something and it is a stepping stone on your journey, right? It's a, it's a stepping stone, not a stumbling block. So it depends on how you look at it. So that's number one. Number two, okay, is waiting to feel like it. And this is something, and you guys know I'm extremely transparent, something I deal with every single day um, is, you know, do I feel like doing said thing? Do I, you know, what if I don't feel like it? I, it's literally a debate that I have with myself. So I set myself up for success by saying, it doesn't matter how I feel. I'm going to do what I need to do. And that's the important factor for you as well is you have to understand that if you're waiting to feel like it, like to have that motivation. And the reason why motivation is such BS is because it gives us an excuse. If we don't feel like doing something, we just go, oh my God, I'm just not motivated today. And you know what? You're probably not going to be motivated because, and, and this is across the board, but especially in goal planning, because if you don't, which is the third one, which is planning, but if you don't have that, the mountain looks huge, right? So when people climb Mount Everest, it's a process. You don't just start that on Monday and you're done Monday. Like it is a, it's a couple weeks, right? Because you have to acclimate to the altitude, then you have to wait, let your blood get good. Cause if not, it, you will, you could die. Right. So like there's that, then you take another few, you know, another little bit, then they, and like you have guides to do that because they know how to properly do it. It's similar to the Grand Canyon. When we were just out in the Grand Canyon in 2019, I was like, Oh, we'll just go down the bottom in my delusional brain, we'll just go down the bottom and then we'll come back up. Yeah, no. <laughs> and it was funny. I saw a ranger and she goes, yeah, yeah no, you're going to go down to that stop right there. And then you're going to come back up. And I thought, well, that's, but I want to go further. And she goes, no, no. I was like, okay, you know what you're talking about. So we did. And it was like six and a half hours to do three miles down and back because it's just the altitude change and all of these things. So you have to have that, right? And that's going to come in with patience and planning, which will come next. But if you aren't willing to do it when you don't feel like doing it, then you're never going to meet that goal. And then you, cause think about this. How many times have you set a goal? Let's say it's an eating goal or a workout goal or what, any goal. Okay. And you plan or you think you plan. You don't really plan. You get an idea, you get all of the things, you do all of the things, you start it. You're like, oh my God, I'm three days into this. This is so awesome. But you've done it hardcore. Like you didn't micro step it. You started cutting things out. You started doing everything was strict, 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 and everything was big. And then day four, you're just like, oh my God, I can't. Like, I'm just so over this. I'll just start again on Monday. How many times have you started again on Monday? Multiple. Because you're biting off more than you can chew. It just does not, that's not where we're going. Okay. So it's being okay with it, not being easy, doing it even when you don't feel like doing it. And the third and in many ways, the most important, but they're all important, is the patience and the planning. You gotta plan, right? A goal without a plan is just a dream and a wish. That's all that is, right? You can't say, I'm gonna go clean the house. 
okay? Well, you know, I'm just going to start at the top and go to the bottom. You know, what, what, that's not a plan. That's an idea, but it's the micro goaling. If you go to episode 37 of my podcast, you'll hear more, and it's also here on YouTube, but it's like, um, if you go back to it, it talks about micro goaling, and I am going to do a more updated version, so it just keeps it at the top. But micro goaling is the baby steps. See, your patient says you need to jump out the box and lose those 30 pounds next week, or you need to clean the house and be minimalized in the month. It, it's unrealistic. So if you're not patient and you're not willing to do these little baby steps, this is what they call the fine details, right? Anybody can think about the big old plan, but what about the fine details? Without the fine details, you're totally sabotaging yourself. That's the healing. That's your healing journey. That's including your healing journey. I promise I'll do a whole podcast on the whole self-sabotage. We'll go deeper on this topic, maybe in a, in a podcast upcoming because it's on my list to do. But it's important that you know that you are sabotaging yourself based on those things, right? You're waiting to know that you might not fail or feeling ready. You're really holding on to this, how do I feel, right? And it's not gonna feel so hard when you're doing just baby steps. And the key is not to just, don't be that person who's like, I start something, I have to finish it. No, you're gonna burn yourself right out. You set that, you do the Pomodoro technique. I literally have a podcast just recently on the Pomodoro technique, which is the 25 increments, 25 minute increments. You gotta go out there and listen to it and watch it. It's important because just because you start a project doesn't mean it has to be finished. When it's done, it's done. When that time set is done, it's done. You don't get any special awards for burning yourself out. Then you're not going to do anything for a month. And now we're right back to where we were. So that's how you're sabotaging yourself when it comes to your dreams and your goals. And you have to be really careful of that because when you're in that space of not planning, it looks like a big task. You don't just cut the things out. Like when you do, when you're dealing with food, you don't just cut things out. Just be like, okay, I'm cutting everything out, cutting out bread. I'm cutting out, unless you are a diabetic or you have some other dietary issues, restrictions. You don't, you have to add in good to subtract the not so good, right? We don't call it bad. We don't call it, you know, awful. We just say things that work and things that don't. And what works for you in your body may not work for me, vice versa. So you have to be clear in that fact. So you got to have the patience. Stop trying to do it all. Stop trying to save all the money and do all of the things and lose all the weight and clean all the houses and start your biggest business. And okay, none of that matters. And stop trying to do 57 things at one time streamline. Okay. You got to streamline. This is something I have to tell myself all the time because I do have different projects going, but it's, I, I got to streamline certain things and it's very meticulously planned and it needs to be even more meticulously planned. And that's what I'm working on. You should always be upping your game too. You always want to step up your game and you always want to reanalyze and revisit your, um, goals. If you go back to yesterday's uh, video on what I do at the beginning of the month, this will help that as well. Because as a person who has anxiety and ADHD and OCD, which OCD and ADHD sort of battle each other, but it has to be done in micro goals. And yeah, in my brain, I want it all done five minutes ago, but you're not just going to watch a Marie Kondo video. And then all of a sudden your entire house is going to be spotless. It's unrealistic. You will burn yourself out. You want to prevent the burnout. So with that being said, that's the three ways. Start your planning.